And we do our second broadcast for today, uh, April 28th, 2015, evening broadcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you, those who um, donated and support me with money. That is a great help. Mm -hmm. I invite more donations. That really helps me to find time to do the broadcasts. I really need that. Five dollars, ten dollars by PayPal. Um, ms two uh, ms two o four o five o seven at gmail dot com. Amazon Max S is in Steinberg. Uh, two o four o five o seven at gmail dot com. Just send your PayPal help, and that would help me to continue in uh, in, the, in such broadcast fashion. I also offer uh, private sessions at introductory rate. Um, can you mute someone who is, uh, I think, uh, okay, I'll mute that. Atav, I muted you, but unmute you when you speak. Hmm. No, it's actually Mark. I will mute you, unmute yourself when you speak. All right, thank you. Uh, so, where I was. Uh, yeah, I offer a private session at an introductory rate of $20 an hour, and I offer computer help, computer tune-up. So I will link to your computer and clean it from bugs and viruses and set it up so it works as it's supposed to. Um, again, at the same rate, $20 an hour introductory rate. Hmm. Now, today was challenging, actually. I'm a beginner channeler, and I met a couple challenges which I don't know what to do with them, actually. One was the, the, the flow of how do you call it? The channeling just stopped at some point, and I was helpless. If they don't speak, what can I do? For me, it, it was actually a confirmation that something is outside of me, that hmm, they play their part. If they don't play their part, I'm screwed, actually. that was Their presence was, but they didn't speak. If they don't speak, what can I do? And the second thing was uh, they also, I censor them sometimes, and they started censoring me. So if they don't want me to speak, my mind goes blank. That was another experience. So I I know I know some answers, but if they don't want me to speak that, just blank. Very interesting. And there were a couple more challenges. If the audience is silent, if the audience doesn't support you, it takes a talent, it takes heart, it takes something else, a magic to uh, to create the show, to create the interaction. And I guess in the future I have to either do a stand-up comedy or, uh, or just wrap it up. So that was my lesson of today. But I'm happy to be starting challenging, ch channeling, challenging, channeling, challenging. I'm happy to be starting channeling. It's it's um, a great pleasure and honor and a gift and co-creation. I I'm my dream comes true. That's wonderful. That's marvelous. All right. Um, I will bring Rojo, my friend Rojo. I wonder how we are we connected. I really wonder. I want to know more about her. Oh, and then she will take it from here. Yeah, one more thing I learned. I it was painful. I cannot I shouldn't switch them that fast. I tried in the morning. I thought, how about I switch them that fast? You know, everyone every new answer they they switch. Grindel, uh -huh. Melkina, hello. Uh, Griddle, Melkina, and Rojo, I tried to switch them, and then it was after that, I was like dying, it was like real pain. They were kind of... Mm. Trial. Yay, that's Dimitri. I, don't, I wonder why Dimitri says trial. It's weird. Can you mute him? I gave you the, the controls. Thank you. Or just inject him. I don't think Dimitri is the real thing. I think it's kind of a robot, because... Uh, is a real user, but probably uh, just technique problem. Trial? No, he's real. I saw him uh, this morning. He had a. I think he's just having issues with his computer. All right. Trial. Trial issue. Yeah. Ah, 
so I should go slower and clear the energies out. Uh, uh, Mark, it is your echo somehow. I don't know how it works, but uh, it's your echo coming back. Mute when you don't speak. So I should spend time on enter, let them enter and exit. Otherwise, they stay here and fight. <laughs> Ah, hello, hello, Rahul here. Hi, Dimitri. Hi, Atava. Hi, Mark, and hi, Matt. Nice to see familiar faces. Welcome back. Thank you. What are your words, questions, messages, sharings of now? All right, I will start and um, feel free to prepare your sharings. I will bring a, a topic which was raised in the morning. <sighs> Networking, yes. Networking. How do you build your network and why do you need to build your network? Ah, it's interesting. There are people coming here, coming into our your our together human colony community. Most of them uh, don't need convincing that we exist. Most of them don't need any help to get up in higher vibration, to fly in the skies, to be absent from uh, mainstream reality. They actually need help grounding and adapting to mainstream reality. Many of you are so happy playing with their soul, playing with the spirits, playing with uh, kindred elementals and nature. So that many of you don't actually feel like you need other humans, other earth humans to interact with. Many of you are happy finding the internet, remote community, and uh, hold virtual spiritual hands and are happy with that. And I say, go local. Go local. It's time to start going local. Find real people locally. Of course, you have to be careful, especially those of you who are not experienced going locally. But that is part of building the network. This is part of saving their human race saving by transforming into the new elevated state, ascended state. You need to build that local network as well. And here, an interesting question comes. Many of you are so hungry, so lonely for love, so lonely for bonding that you want to hug everyone. And if you get hurt, you stop hugging everyone. Ah, that is so human, so normal, especially for the light workers. You hug, and if you get hurt, you don't hug anymore. Ah, is it familiar? I'd, hey say, I'd say so, yes. 
Yes, yes. So what do you do? Ah, that's an art of of building just remote. Not the word remote is already taken. Not as close. Building not as close. Emotionally remote relationships. Just being acquaintances. Friends, not very close friends, just friends. No, that's the word. Just friends. Being just friends. Usually it means I love you, I don't love you anymore, so we are just friends. I hate you. I push you away. But no, I'm, I mean bring people closer, but keep the distance. And as the relationship develops, reduce the distance. And that is necessary for building your network. And when people ask you, how are you, what do you answer? Oh, that's a tough question. If it is a light worker saying, great, and how are you, means that you keep really big distance. But if it is a light worker and they ask, how are you, and you say truth, I am depressed or I'm hurt, or I am not really here, or I spoke to Jesus today, which it could be true, right? Oh. Well, I started channeling. How right? I started channeling, right? Congratulations, Gabriel. He started channeling today. We go in... Hmm in parallel with Gabriel. That's a nice, clear soul. He says what he thinks, and I say to him what he thinks, and we ne never are offended. I say, I meaning Max, of course. All right. <sighs> so, building this, ah, oh, not so close relationships. Some of you are good in that and some of you have to learn that art. And you have been asking several of you, how do you start the conversation? How do you initiate the contact? Hmm. One of good ways to initiate the contact is just jump on the neck and hug someone. Yeah, pretty ladies do that easily, and it works great. Yeah, but, you know, conversation starters are an art. And I know you, Matt, is, you, Matt, are, you are great in that. Can you share your art of conversation? What do you, what, here was a friend of ours, and he wanted to speak to someone, a young gentleman, not very skilled in social interactions, very bright, but not skilled in social interaction, and he wanted to speak to someone who thought, who he had a great resonance with, and actually this young lady just said hi and smiled. Yes, I will wrap up soon, thank you. How do you, what would you say on the street? What would you say to her? Well, I don't uh, judge them for anything that they've done or are saying. I uh, just want to let them know that first that uh, I truly am open, coming with an open heart. Yes. Hmm. If it is a light work, if, and if you feel real resonance, your message, whatever words are there, your message could be, my intentions are really pure. I just want to introduce myself. I just want to start a, a conversation, explore the possibility of being friends, just a little bit of conversation. How do you say that? Hmm. To someone you just meet on the street? Yeah, someone you meet and who smiled to you. Well, I definitely take their number and um, 
or information and uh, definitely keep in contact. One thing I've, I've realized throughout my life is if I do do that, to make sure that I follow through and I do keep in contact with that person. But how do you start? That's great what you said, absolutely great. Yes, follow through, keep the contact, but how do you start? It's so easy for you, you don't, don't even understand the question. Well, I start with People a smile. <laughs> a smile, and then what? People are shy. People don't know what to say to a beautiful lady who smiles to them. Maybe she smiles at them. <laughs> what do you say? How do you start? Um, I say what a beautiful day it is and uh, depending on where we are or what, what it is I, I like to bring up maybe something that's going on around and then uh -huh. um, go into a conversation. I, it's, it's hard to, like you said, I think it's so easy for me, it's just hard to put into words mm. because I feel like I come to people um, just enjoying with the hopes of having a great conversation and enjoying that person's company. Ah, here is the key, right? You don't look that far. You don't look, you know, marry me or we become best friends or any of that. You are focusing on, on the now, right? Having a great conversation is the purpose. Yes. Ah. Anybody else, please share your Earth experience. Uh, you just say, uh, hey, and uh, you, uh, if they respond, you know, you just go on from there. You know, How? Um, what do you say? You say, hey, and if they respond, you're like, uh, what? Oh, um, nice weather, huh? Or something like that, something innocuous. <laughs> How about the people who don't know what the weather is? It nice, and they don't pay attention, and they hate talking about weather. What can they talk about? Um, I don't know. It could be just the state of whatever place you're in. Yeah, they I'm like, boring. Oh, I, I don't know how to start the conversation, and no, I don't. I'm starting like it because I'm <laughs> starting it. I'm starting. I'll start it with you. I'll have a conversation. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know what else. I yeah. thought I do. <laughs> if you see a child, you say, nice shoes, nice dress. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, true. Nice toy. <laughs> oh, you're better at this than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you say to a beautiful lady? Yeah, that's hard. Make them laugh. Yes. Ah, that's toughest, isn't it? <laughs> ah. All right, actually, I have to start wrapping up. I'm sorry for the so, so short um, session. Ah, hello, everybody. Ah, do you have any questions before I leave? Holly, how are you? How was the, your day today? It was excellent, thank you. I was wondering if you could put out a call to one of your fellow Yales. Um, I am a healer, and I wanted to know if perhaps you could send me somebody who will work with me in healing and that I can channel. Ah, uh, yes. I saw you do that for someone else. I wondered if you could help me, please. Yes. Uh, thank you for your request. It is taken. Um, I pass it along. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, please. Mm. Can you afford buying a $20 book? If not, that would be all right. Certainly. Just tell me the name. Yeah. Go to Amazon. Find a book called X3. X3. Yes. And it has more words. Something like extraterrestrial medicine. Oh. Yes. It is an excellent book. And the aliens described there are oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. 
that will give you so much guidance and you will know where to go from there. Thank yes. you so much. That is approved in general. And if you're already a healer, then my guess, only guess, would be that the path is pretty clear. But it's uh, mm, up to those people who will be dealing with you. I am not part of that structure, but I passed along your request. Yes. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Uh, when you start your healings, uh, ask your patient which of their higher beings they would they be comfortable to be um, helped by. Um, angelics, spirit guides, um, saints, um, yeah, saints and your friendly extraterrestrials, your extraterrestrial friends. And if they're open to that, you can officially invite us. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it is okay to not to officially ask. Sometimes just if the patient just know that she, he, he or she comes to you and you deal with such energies just by coming to you and laying down and having your Reiki healing, it's implied that you work with those energies and they don't mind. So it's really up to mm, the circumstances. It don't have. It doesn't have to be that formal. I think it's often. Often it is all right, especially I would say in non-English speaking cultures, it goes as given as by default. But here in America, it might be more formal. It's up to you. You know better. Thank you. Ah, the symbol. I need to give you the symbol. Let me give you the symbol. Okay. Let me give you the symbol just a second. Mm. It should be a usable, simple one, right? Mm. Ah, here you go. Here you go. It would be just a triple helix DNA. Triple helix DNA. It's not unusual. It is known even to human scientists. It has been discovered many years ago. It's it's kind of commonplace, but it has a triangle idea as well as the idea of strands going in opposite directions and the energy is going in opposite directions. But triple helix would be a good invitation for our energies. But what do I do with this symbol? Do I find one and print it out? Mm. Or just think about it? Mm. Um, either way is fine. I don't have a particular preference. As long as I call my attention to you it. You can use your fingers to draw a triple helix in the air. It could be I... that movement or that movement. I guess that movement is appropriate. It has to go the right screw way, as if you are screwing the screw. It goes clockwise. right hand this way. Yes. Or clockwise. Right way hand That's clockwise, right. yes. Right yep. hand. Well, thank you so much. And double helix is same thing, just two strands, and triple helix would be three strands. They are not equal, though. Two strands usually are native DNA, and third strand could be something else, an RNA, 
a protein mimicking DNA or ethereal strand. Ethereal strand. So <laughs> it's special. And these two strands they actually go in opposite direction. They go like that. Like that. Okay. It's it's common knowledge, except the ethereal one, which is actually is described in X3 book. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just remember in this X3 books, yes. Yes, I An interesting look. thing is described. I think it is the only place in human literature where it is described. He spoke to us, the author, and we gave him that explanation. And it makes sense. He describes how the memory is stored. Hmm. You see, the human science, modern science, still believes that the memory is stored in the brain physically. And it could be stored there short term, but longer term, it's actually stored in the ethereal body. So there is an interface between physical brain and the ethereal brain, and the memory goes there, and especially it goes there during the sleep, during the dream state. And it's stored there. And it is retrieved from there partly ethereally and partly physically through resonance. You have to tune into the frequency pattern of the memory you retrieve and it, you pull it by the frequency into your physicality. Oh. And what is interesting, it is stored in the ethereal body as molecular ethereal molecular chains. You actually build a code as if you would do in a computer, a code. You, you use ethereal molecular letters to build a chain of memory. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Very. Yes. All right. Any more questions before I go? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so I'm uh, playing with the idea or the actual um, action of um, by locating. Ah, yes. And uh, I accomplished for a split second here and there. Would you have any suggestions or information that could aid me in? Furthering this um, this action, this uh, play, or whatever you want to call it. So, what have you achieved? Where were you located? Mm, well, uh, I have played with going to a, let's say, a grocery store. A friend uh -huh. tells me a grocery store that she frequents, so I try to go. I go there. And try to sense, feel how, how, what things that stand out about it. And I also have tried it with um, in my room. And I'm on the bed, and then another me, another body replica is on the wall, touching the wall. Uh, but those two are the main ones I have tried. Uh, locations that places that I can, you know, get some verifications on and the, the side of the wall. Fascinating. Yeah, we do that all the time. Yeah, I hear. It is commonplace for us. Uh, mm, some other races do that as well. It's sort of just convenient. If you can do that, why not to do that? Uh, some of that art has been known in the time, in all times before, it has been lost in Egyptian times. It was there before Atlantis in Lemurians, mm, times of that scale, ah, by location. Fascinating. I understand that this is yeah, a nice experimentation. So you are into experiments. You want 
to achieve something and then prove that you achieved this. Yeah, of course, yes. Yes, it's like Schrodinger's cat. You can achieve it, but when you want to prove it, that shrinks their achievement. That's yes, the nature. Also, yes. yes. Yes, and also, but just uh, sustaining it. I understand. Sustaining the action. Mm. Ah. <laughs> you see, it's hard to advise here because it's not clear what you achieve in here. You are playing, yes, with the Matrix. I guess you like the movie Matrix, do you? <laughs> I used to do magic myself, so yeah. The Matrix, right? Yes, the yeah. Matrix. No, Matrix. Maybe I pronounce it. Matrix. Oh, the Matrix. 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 Oh, yes, yes, yes. I like the movie, yes. The movie, yes. So, <laughs> the key here is that <sighs> miracles, distortions of of the matrix are permitted when there is a justification. So how do you justify you need to obtain the permission for these distortions? How do you justify to whoever gives the permission that you 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 should be entitled to for the permission? If you had have a higher purpose, if you raised your vibration. If you raise the vibration of your peers, if you build a network, because everything that helps ascension is sort of considered to be justifiable. Everything that saves human race considered to be justifiable. By location is a little bit too soon. You possibly would get there. In mm, maybe in generation or two, but not yet. So that's a little bit too soon. So it's a little bit too early experimentation, I would say. I don't want to put you down, but how you would you justify that? Uh, yeah, I don't need to. I mean, personally, I don't feel I need to justify it because I'm in this journey for myself and yes. who benefit from it, benefit from it, and who don't, well, they don't. Yes. And so I personally don't feel requirement for justification unless you are maybe talking about mm, the idea of a permission slip. I'm talking about that you either do it or mm -hmm. get the proof that you have done it. You see? Okay. If you need to do it and then get the proof, then you need the permission from whoever is controlling oh. there. Uh, solidity, their order in the matrix, they have to justify the distortion. If that distortion serves your personal ascension or the ascension of the race, then it is justified. I suppose it does help to raise your vibration, so it's partially justified. And if you achieve that, you spread that excitement to others, and that is like a crop circle and other and channeling other little miracles, psychic miracles, which helps other to awaken. So that's another justification. So connect the dots, have clear understanding why are you doing that, why it is exciting. And then you might get more help and more permissions to distort the uh, the physical laws and the matrix. Yes, it's already pretty distorted, pretty fluid. Yes. Uh, possibly you have already experienced, in, experienced doing that in other lives, so it comes natural to you as a natural talent. Mm. Being a crystal child. Bending spoons and doing the, these kind of things, right? So it's just one of the exercises of freeing the spirit and creating your own reality, right? Have you read the book The Field? 
Mayfield. Uh, no. By Lynn McTaggart. Highly recommended. And very inexpensive. Uh, they describe an experiment where they mm, take a tiny crystal, but it's a real crystal of geometric pattern, and send it through two holes, two holes, geometric holes in a physical experimentation system. And it goes through and diffracts as a wave. So a crystal in experimental system becomes a wave and shows the properties of the wave. Just understanding that you are a wave helps you bilocate. You, you understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So even <laughs> modern physics allows that. So as you understand that even modern physics allows it, that helps you to expand in that direction. If you had a practical reason to be in two places at the same time, that even more would be even more justification for the distortion. And of course, uh, shamanic rituals. Yes, shamanic rituals and other spiritual tools which would raise your vibration and help the reality to be shifted to the four dimension. Basically, you are playing with the four dimensional idea in its primitive form. So you bring four dimensional reality to your reality and this is Yes, this is allowed sometimes. Yes. Hmm. And yeah, how, I keep in mind, yes. Uh, when you say raising your vibration. Yes. You mean you need to I personally don't think it's uh, something a complex thing to do, but if if you want to maybe um, explain more of that, I would like to hear if you think that's beneficial? Oh, it's a big topic. Okay. Let me pick something. Uh, purity. I would pick on purity. <sighs> yes. Mm. Many people mm wish to go up in dimensions, penetrate the veil and connect, reconnect with their spirit and their kindred spirits with their friendly aliens. And one of the things which holds them back is purity. By definition, your genome is messed up in a way that it's not pure anymore. High vibration is not mm, sustainable there because of mm, mess ups in the sequence. We, on our level, we have much more harmonious DNA because of many things, including we can clear it up mentally and technically. That's why bringing alien extraterrestrial star beings genes into humanity allows to restore these clear vibrations. Aging also distorts the DNA sequence and the protein alignment. So pure, pure mind and pure interactions of the soul with the mind, pure purpose helps stri stratify and clear and purify the DNA vibrations, removing the, mm, there is a term, epigenetic distortions, removing the structural distortions, make it more orderly, more crystalline as it should be. And as it becomes more crystalline, high vibrations become much easier and the veil becomes way more transparent. So 
I guess that would be a nice closing blessing. I wish you much success in a way of purifying your vibration, picking their essence, finding your own vibration, finding your own essence and purifying it from your life impurities, from the traumas of your life, from the traumas of your past life, from the traumas of your parents, purifying everything which doesn't belong and coming up with the most exciting, most pure vibration which is most dear to you. That is my blessing and desire and wish to you for today. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Ah, thank you, everybody. Um, I need your financial support. Send a little bit of money to um, ms20405 or seven at gmail.com through PayPal. I offer private channeling sessions. And I offer computer cleanup uh, through internet connection. I would uh, clean it from viruses, bugs, and set it up at the introductory rate of $20 an hour. Goodbye, and join us in the future broadcasts. To be invited, send a mail to max at humancolony.org, and I will include you in, in the invitations. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. Ciao, Max. Bye. <clears throat> Take Bye. care.